before I get back to Chewy Garcia. <laughs> the uh, back of the day, Lakeshore Drive went right through here. This way, right, Lakeshore Drive went through, and it went right past the swimming pool right here. Then it went to the S curve. Yeah, the Lakeshore Drive went right through here. Then the S curve was back here, but that was like 30 years ago, 35 years ago, whenever they got rid of it. Right past this cool swimming pool, and this was like vacant lots. This was like nothing, and. Uh, through the gentrification and demographic shifts and all that kind of good stuff. See, a lot of the quote-unquote white folks that used to live in Chicago, they didn't die, moved on, and moved out to the suburbs, Florida, Arizona, whatever. These are different kind of white folks. <laughs> and, I, I, and I don't mind the gentrification and expansion of all these condos and whatnot because I live in the city, and I live in the hood, of course. But uh, these folks, uh, they, they keep the town from falling down the drain and being Detroit. Do you understand that? The only part of Chicago that's imploding is the black neighborhood because we crazy people. We are descendants of the slaves. We've been taught to be crazy, to, to, to distrust each other. So the Arabs and the, and the Asians and the Koreans and the East Indians run all the little businesses in our neighborhood. And, uh, and we, can't, we, don't, we don't have an economic base, so the police can kill our children, kill our young men, kill black men. I don't care if it's Chicago, New York, Ferguson. Because black folks don't have an economic base. Okay, I'm going to get back to Chewy Garcia. Calm down. <laughs> In the mayor's race. But black folks don't have an economic base. And no one's really, uh, you know, they don't, they don't respect black folks. Because we don't respect ourselves. And, and we're not a monolith. I mean, let's face it. And the poor black folks make the rest of us look bad. Well, I'm poor too. Don't get me in one level. I ain't. Look at that. That's that school they built. I don't even know the name of the school. They built in a, a, the British school or something on the south side. I think I showed you that school. Man, I would love to come down here and live in one of these buildings. There used to be a golf course here years ago. Actually, a nine-hole golf course. But they put all these condos and stuff. And uh, But I'm a south sider, so I came. So I, don't, I, I told myself never to move to the north side. I can't cross Madison Avenue. So I can't live here, y'all, because this is north of Madison Avenue. Just north. <laughs> but I still can't live here. This little, this little cheap video I'm doing is uh, doesn't do justice. When you come to Chicago, roll through, it's right off of uh, Randolph Street. Uh, it's really magnificent. Man, this is a great city. Uh, that's why I'm so ashamed of uh, my people. And I know why they act crazy, because we crazy people. We're the descendants of the slaves, the so-called Negroes, the so-called African Americans. See, I can move into the, I can move into these, well, let me see. I can move into these buildings over here because they south of, uh, south of Madison. And that one's just north of Madison. <laughs> but a lot of these old buildings have turned into condominiums. There's more people live down here and actually work down here, I think. But that's the way it is. But what I'm trying to say, though, is that Chewy Garcia could get Rahm Emanuel in a runoff, which is very nice. And he, and, but I don't think he's going to win. And then really the key is that will the African-American community or the European-American community uh, vote for a... Uh, uh, a gentleman of Mexican descent. I don't know if he's, I think he's born here and he's American, but you know, I hate to uh, uh, vote for a Mexican to be the first Mexican American uh, mayor of Chicago. I, I don't, and that, hey, I don't know. See, when you get a chance, listen to uh, WVON Radio. W, w, WVON Radio is the black talk station here in Chicago, the African American talk station. Yeah. WVON is the African American talk station, talk, talk station Chicago. It's not really truly representative of all African Americans, but it can, get, it can give you a small sample of how some of us feel. Not all of us, because usually people that call call in on the on the radio station are, are rank and file Negroes, regular non-con college graduates running their mouth Negroes. Some of these professional phone callers, okay. And uh, I used to be one of them, so I shouldn't hate. <laughs> but the, what I'm trying to say, when you hear, listen to WVON radio, you will hear some sentiments that there are some African Americans who are kind of a uh, whatever. They don't like the Mexicans taking over Chicago. I talked to a guy before. He said, man, the Mexicans are taking over Chicago because a lot of the old white ethnic neighborhoods are all Latino, all mainly Mexicans because Latinos, you know, that's the whole group. The Hispanics, Spanish, Hispanic, Hispanics, Hispanic is, I think, is a gringo term. So I try not to use it per se. But the Latinos are mainly Mexican here in Chicago. And I ain't mad at them. I ain't mad at them at all. So ain't no, it's no time to hate people. Y'all got to stop the hate. You need to stop hating and congratulate. But there are some African Americans who would not vote for Chuy Garcia because he's Mexican. Uh, so he may not win because of that. And uh, Rahm Emanuel has enough money to divide and conquer people. I ain't saying that's wrong because if I was Rahm Emanuel, I would divide and conquer. Because divide and conquer always wins. Well, at least nine times out of ten it wins. Divide and conquer. 
So Chewy Garcia may come close. He may get Rahm Emanuel in a runoff, but uh, he'll probably lose. In fact, Rahm Emanuel may win. Who knows? He may win with a, a plurality, or he may win with 51%. Get it? 1%? 51% of the vote. Man, this is a, this is a this is a kick buck magnificent city. You can see uh, a lot of towns now have Ferris wheels. You know, you got the big eye in London, and but a lot of towns think Seattle and Atlanta. Everybody got a Ferris wheel downtown, which is cool. But this this is Chicago River. So there are probably I was saying that there's many African Americans who are probably I don't know what the percentage. I don't have any polls. I haven't taken any polls who may not vote for Chewy Garcia because he's Mexicans because they they feel the Mexicans take it over. In fact, I, I forgot what report I was looking at. It was either Sarah Carp on the Catalyst magazine or WBZ uh, radio or website, and they were saying how uh, uh, and I should have had the source, but it was something to the fact that the medium income of Latinos is forty thousand. The medium income in Chicago of African Americans is $30,000. And you shake out those numbers, and I don't know how they, they shake out, but the point is that the, if you use those economic uh, factors that uh, Latinos are doing better than African Americans in Chicago. Because we don't have an uh, economic base. We just spend all of our money and make other people rich. Beautiful condo. That's the Sheridan Hotel. This is the new, Lo the new Lowe's Hotel right behind this. It's the new Lowe's Hotel. So that's the see that's so so it's really tricky, and Chewy Garcia is a really nice candidate. He's a, he was an ally with Mayor Washington, but Mayor Washington that was like 30 years ago. There's a lot of folks in this town don't even know who, who Mayor Washington was when he was mayor. None of that stuff. Some older people, but not and folks of my age, but an older. I'm in my 50s. Damn. But a lot of young people don't they don't know, and they probably not gonna even vote. I was I was you know. Think about the uh, Chicago. May, uh, Chicago may be ready for a Latino mayor, a Mexican mayor. Uh, Vic, I can't say his name. Mr. Div <laughs> Chicago. Chicago may be ready for a, a Latino mayor, a Mexican mayor. It's going to happen eventually. Uh, if not this election. It'll happen within the next ten years, probably. Uh, Miguel Devalle ran for mayor years ago, four years ago. That's the yes, the yacht club. Miguel Devalle ran for mayor four years ago and didn't win, and for a lot of different reasons. And and Gary Chico ran for mayor four years ago, and Jerry Chico, nice guy, he's uh, he seen to be nice. Here in Chicago, on social media, and on WVON radio station, the talk radio station, African-American radio station here in Chicago, you hear some African-American men, I mean some, complain about Rahm Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago. It's easy to say mean things and bad things about Rahm Emanuel, but the average brother, the average black man is not going to take on the black woman, his wife, his girlfriend, his baby's mama, who is raising their boys. That's what we should be focus focusing on. How do we ensure that every African American boy, our boys, our children, our grandchildren, our nephews, how do we ensure that all of our boys, our African American boys, are reading at grade level? Let's focus on that. Let's focus on ensuring that every African American boy is reading at grade level, reading and writing at grade level. Let's focus on that. In Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness, there are over 800,000 black men in prison. 40% of all inmates in prison are black men. We know why there's so many African American men in prison. We know the reasons and we know the solutions. But we need more churches, more community organizations, more public schools, more social services to focus on the solution. We know the solution. 
And the solution is to help our mothers and our grandmothers raise their little boys properly. Not to have our little boys hanging out on the street, not doing their homework, becoming wayward, not having structured activities. Mama, grandmama, don't let your boy hang out in the street. Don't you want your little boy to become a good, handsome, smart, African-American man? You don't want your little boy to be a gangbanger, a drug dealer, a drunk, a drug addict, an incarcerated person, and of course an ex-felon. You don't want that. Please ask for help. The solution to solving these problems of all these young men and old men black men, African American men in prison is to raise the next generation, the succeeding generations properly. Mama, Grandmama, ask for help. Please ask for help before it's too late. All 8th graders should go on a college tour so we should encourage grammar school principals to take their 8th graders on a college tour to a college like Northwestern University or Notre Dame University. I can hear the critics now saying why are you taking eighth graders on a college tour to schools like Northwestern and Notre Dame knowing they ain't never going to qualify and be admitted to top universities in America. I understand. But the point is you're trying to expand the consciousness of students so they can have a consciousness and thoughts beyond the hood to get them to know there's a world outside the hood whether they go to Notre Dame, Northwestern, UIC, U of I in Champaign, city colleges in Chicago or community college in some other state, some other city, to let them know the possibilities that there's a world beyond their old neighborhood. That's the point. Expand their consciousness.